Welcome to a special bonus episode, everyone. This episode, we are bringing you a spotlight for Rest in Pieces by Pete Petrusha, a game that is going to begin kickstarting the very day this episode drops. If you are getting this episode right away, follow the link to the Kickstarter and follow the project to be notified when it goes live. It is quite a delightful casual RPG, so I hope you enjoy the episode, which we will get to right after these announcements. First up, some Kickstarters are wrapping up very soon. Bolt has less than a week left. If you enjoyed our last series, check that one out for sure. If you are listening to this the day it came out, the Acaticon Kickstarter is also in its final hours. We are potentially planning two panels for the online convention, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, but this is your chance to easily get tickets to the event. And finally, the Campaign Skyjacks album has a little over a week left, has slashed through all of its stretch goals, and is a really cool project. So check that one out as well. In other news, I have been nominated for a couple of Audioverse awards for my work on a Horror Borealis, which I am very excited about. Thank you to everyone who sent in nominations for me. I am entirely grateful. But we only have one more day to nominate more folks. We'll have some links to some very handy Google document files that I put together that will help you fill out the forms without having to think too much for the other great shows on the One Shot Podcast Network. Shows that definitely need some help getting nominated still are Skyjacks Courier's Call, Campaign Skyjacks, The Broadswords, and Neo Scum. This process is a little time consuming but the documents help out immensely. Finally, please check out our links to the various review platforms out there and leave us a five-star rating and review. It makes us incredibly happy to read your reviews and really does help us out a lot. And when Amelia and I can record these together, we'll be reading them right here. But that's enough announcements for now. In the meantime, get ready for this great conversation that I had with Pete Petrusha about this very cool game. Enjoy. to a special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight, everyone. In this bonus segment, we'll be shining a light on some current or up-and-coming games to keep an eye out for. I'm your host, Ryan, and today we are welcoming Pete Petrusha to talk about Rest in Pieces, a dark comedy role-playing game that plays with a two-color Jenga-like tower. Welcome to Character Creation Spotlight, Pete. It is really great to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh... I've really enjoyed listening to the podcast, especially because I get to like, I kind of feel like I get to meet new designers that I never get a voice for their name. So it's been really yeah. cool enjoying the podcast over, you know. Well, thank you. I appreciate you listening. Uh, you want to start us off uh, with first telling us a bit about yourself and uh, some sort of uh, projects that you have going on. I know you have quite a few. Yeah. Well, you know, the big <laughs> one, the big one is I'm a dad to a two year old. So that that's oh, the yeah. big job, right? Um, mm -hmm. of a wonderful little works. Do you? Oh, yeah. How many? I've got two, a four and two year old. Oh, uh, yeah. So you my my boy just turned to like uh, the seventh. So five days ago. So you totally oh. understand. It seems like they never stop TV. Yeah. And, you know, well, welcome to the fun time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the last game I made, it was a lot easier, you know, because it was before. Uh -huh. Before being a dad, but yeah, so I, I work for Social Security. I've always been really into social programs, mm -hmm. which is an interesting leeway into game design because you, you kind of already think that you can make sort of like infrastructure that'll help improve people's lives. Yeah. Um, so it kind of works hand in hand with making games. Um, I also run convention booths for the Indie Game Developer Network. Okay. Uh, we recently had the Indie Groundbreaker Award, so I've been hosting that. Nice. And, uh, yeah. 
uh, make games, obviously. Yeah. I mean, that's why we're here, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, awesome. may, you may have recognized, you know, now that I got you, because for a long time I was like, hey, I made this game called Dream Chaser. It's a really cool game. It empowers story building. And I was like, mm-hmm. I should really reach out to Character Creation Cast sometime and be like, you got to see this because the best part of the game is the character creation. Mm-hmm. So, you know, afterwards, we'll have to talk. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the type of stuff that we eat up like candy here. And so. of course, uh, we're here today because rest in pieces. Uh, exactly. I had a great quote just the other day, and it was, it's a little storytelling, it's a little Jenga, and it's a whole lot of attitude. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems apparent throughout the, the whole game's presentation that that's going to be the case. Yeah. I really like it. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, and since this is an abridged version of our normal format, we're going to be sticking to the highlights of the system with a special focus on character creation. So without further ado, how about we find out what this game is all about? What's in a game? All right. Uh, could you start off by telling us a bit about the core concept of Rest in Pieces? Definitely. So Rest in Pieces, um, it's inspired by shows like The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Um, that's pretty old. So more recent stuff is kind of like uh, the regular show, Rick and Morty. Uh, it's mm-hmm. always sunny in Philadelphia. So okay. this is a game where you play uh, fed up deadbeat roommates that just so happen to live with the Grim Reaper. So, right, like all these shows, they share degenerate characters who are doing things that are probably ridiculous or kind of, you know, I'll keep that word to myself. (laughs) But, you know, a lot of times it's mundane stuff that explodes in their face. And in this game, it also accentuates that uh, that cartoon like sort of ridiculousness that happens with the cartoon logic. Yeah. Um, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, uh, not only is it, you know, it's a lighthearted game, uh, but it, it tries to tackle like kind of bad days, right? Like they, the, the game feels like the characters feel like it's always raining on them, right? It's always oh, yeah. a bad day when you're playing. Um, and that creates like difficult friendships, just like the roommate situation is. Yeah. Right. You're stuck with each other. So you got to make it work or, or maybe you don't. And that's the fun in the game. Yeah. And you're stuck with death, too. Yes, yes. Death is, <laughs> death is the agent that gets thrown in there that makes sure that problems occur and they happen fast, right? It oh, gets the amazing. game started. So we're not sitting there because, you know, what's the weird thing is obviously it's a game about deadbeat roommates, but it's funny because, like, well, most people think of them as, like, slackers and procrastinators, <laughs> and that's not the fun part of gaming. So, like, mm-hmm. it's a natural tendency that, like, the gamers sometimes will be like, okay, well, what do we do? And you're like, well, it's kind of funny. I like as a game designer that you feel like a slacker. <laughs> but as the game designer, I know that's not fun. So immediately we have this agent, right, who's like the agent of chaos, which yeah. is our insanely powerful pain in the butt, you know, character, in this case, death. So. Oh, that's amazing. Awesome. So it sounds like uh, we play in kind of like a modern-ish setting, uh, but is there any other types of like specifics to the setting that you want to go over? Sure. So the big thing with that is it always takes place in a roommate situation. So the characters are deadbeat roommates. They're stuck with a, a pain in the butt character. And for that, the setting is 80 to 90% of the time takes place almost solely in a pad. And by that, I mean, it comes from bachelor pad, right? But like, yeah, you're, you're in a cramped studio apartment. You're, you're in a situation, maybe like a boathouse. It's always crappy. It's always mm-hmm. like there's no bedrooms. There's no privacy. You're on top of one <laughs> another. And it creates this sort of pressure cooker where everyone's problems are on top of each other and in your face. And that's yeah. fun for this sort of like immediate role playing game experience. Yeah, absolutely. So what sort of materials do we need to play a game of rest in pieces? Um, I should have mentioned earlier, right? But the the interesting mechanic thing is that it plays with a a two color block tower like Jenga. Um, You mentioned in the header, but um, a lot of people look at it like it's a Jenga game. And that that, that's by intention. You know, it follows in suit uh, inspirations like Dread and Starcross. Mm hmm. But uh, so we have two colors, which is an interesting twist on the the Jenga tower. You have a core deck, but it's not like playing cards. Uh, The original, the current iteration of it is uh, a deck of cards that has uh, rules to like, how do you play the game? Uh, How do you make a character? And then you actually use many of the cards physically to lay out in front of you as like what my character can do, what bothers them, what are their hopes and dreams? Um, And the idea is that they're all inspiration. 
yeah. I hope to, that players like me will get comfortable and they'll, they'll want to make up their own stuff. And that's totally cool. Yeah, I I uh, got the preview box uh, that you had sent and the the tower, when you open the box, it is very striking. Uh, it, it really does look uh, really nice with that dual tone, uh, natural wood and black color um, blocks kind of crossed amongst one another. Instead of the white, um, right? I thought about doing like white and black, but it's overkill. Yeah, I think so. I, I really like the uh, the natural wood color on there. Um, I think it it kind of is like, yeah, you're playing with Jenga blocks, but it's different because you got the black stuff in there as well. Which when uh, you which bring up, cool. you know, I, I one of the things that's very interesting about it is I think in some ways it expands the audience of a role playing game because of the, it has that tactile nature. That, yes. that sensory nature. Now, it's it's not everyone's cup of tea, right? Some people specifically are, you know, it, it, a lot has changed, right? People used to be a lot more diehard about only dice with the role playing games. Yes. Um, but we've seen a lot of expansion, maybe due to Kickstarter, but also just the growing audience that's really mm -hmm. expanded um, interest. And, you know, this game, uh, one of the big inspirations of it was uh, selling games at PAX Unplugged for the Indie Game Developer Network. Mm. And realizing how many people were coming up, and this was a couple years back, so they're more educated now as a general consumer base. But, um, you know, they were like, oh, these are games? Because they came to our booth and they just saw books, 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 yeah. books. Um, and boxes mean games and books mean I got to read. <laughs> Which, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so the cons one of the conceptual things of this game was if I want to give you a card deck and a Jenga tower and say go play and – I think psychologically players are like, oh, wow, we can play this right now. And I'm yeah. like, yes, you can. Like you can read it on 10 cards and then get started. Yeah. Um, so hopefully you will be playing in the hallway at PAX Unplugged in 10 minutes from now if you want mm -hmm. to with your friends. That's a, that's a really interesting observation because uh, when I was at Gen Con, I saw people all over the place playing things like um, uh, For the Queen yeah, and, uh, and Illimat. Uh, was kind of all over as mm -hmm. well this last Gen Con. Um, and it was really interesting because those are all games that are just like cards and maybe a play mat and yeah. stuff like that. Um, but with like For the Queen, you've got an amazing amount of storytelling possibilities there. Certainly. And the the trend towards being able to play a role playing game without needing a book yeah is is really interesting yeah we just want you know i mean obviously uh, it's funny cuz kickstarter now it's start we're starting to see that the wave come in like i just saw atma that's available and that's another you know like a small box two player i don't think that's two player small box but role playing game it's all cards mm -hmm. fiasco's just went to cards uh, zombie world got four nods at the Ennies this year and their card based apocalypse world, you know, like, Oh, wow. um, so it, it's definitely a trend that I, in some ways I'm like, did I make, <laughs> I wish the game would have happened sooner because I've been working right. on it for a few years. Um, I saw these things happen, uh, as I was still trying to be like, God, it's not hard enough yet. It needs to be harder. It's about bad days. <laughs> uh, so finally it's in a great place, uh, where I think the flow is really well. And yeah. it's neat that the tower, not only is it fun and interesting, um, the two colors represent kind of like characters doing selfish acts or selfless acts. Oh, so the selfless is kind of like, are you actually caring about the roommates or the apartment building or the people around you? Or are you a deadbeat roommate? And, you know, what half the time your actions probably are about yourself. Like, wow, hey, I'm trying to be famous. You know, like, I, or yeah. I, 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 right now, I'm not thinking about you guys. I don't care that the kitchen's burning. I'm yeah. watching this TV show. You know, <laughs> my boss is calling. Forget them. You know, like, yeah. And that's really interesting because sometimes in Jenga, there's only one option. Well, to, yeah. To, to pull and build up the tower. And if that one option is something that you weren't considering. Yeah. And now you have to go in a completely different direction. That's that's really intriguing. Yeah. Yeah. And what's fun is. Uh, as a game master, it's kind of interesting because you're looking at like a finite amount of good and almost bad choices that can be made Yeah. per episode. Because the tower, when the tower falls in this game, it ends an episode, which is kind of like okay. a short game session. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the games really could be like 30 minutes if you have a really quick game. But yeah. uh, most of the time I see they, they, they work about an hour. So it's nice that they fit in a very comfortable amount of time that people can go play like a board game. They can sit yeah. down and fit in their schedules. Um you know, I, a, a recent interview I got was uh, the, the a woman who was there was like, oh, wow, I could this works with my schedule. You know, like, yeah, um, I can actually play a role playing game. 
Um, but if you want to keep having episodes, kind of like these regular show or Rick and Morty, these because a lot of these shows have like fifth. Uh, it's always sunny. It's they're always two episodes per half hour. They're like yeah. two 15 minute episodes. So players can continue playing. They just start a new episode. It just has a ridiculous ending that kind of gives us a climax, which is the tower falling in this sort of epilogue around the table thing. And then then they decide if they keep going like, hey, okay. did, did we get what we wanted on this? Is this show done? Are we going to move <laughs> on to the next show? Or is this like a to be continued dot dot dot? Yeah. You know, I like that. Uh, it, it very much feels like a ongoing sitcom at that point. <laughs> yeah. Are, are we going to be binge watching this uh, improv sitcom or are we going to be uh, just packing it up for the night? Which is funny because a lot of people these days, right? If Like me, when I finally sat down and watched Rick and Morty, I, you know. I, I couldn't stop, right? And I had yeah. to because I have a two-year-old. But you know, exactly. I, I, I find myself all the time watching two to four episodes, you know, until I got through it. And the regular show is kind of the same thing. When they're like 11 minutes, sometimes you watch six, sometimes you watch one. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, one thing we didn't mention now that you're, you're making me think of the mechanics and um, what w- games need problems, right? And in mm-hmm. this game in particular, so every character has some things, pet peeves, has some things that bother them already baked in about the other players because we want mm-hmm. the roommates to be at each other's throats a little bit too because th- that's the feeling of being roommates. We we all passively aggressive, aggressively bother one another. It just yeah. happens, <laughs> you know? There's not enough space. The kitchen isn't as clean as I would like it to be. Every time mm-hmm. I go to the bathroom, I put the toilet seat down, you know, the things. <laughs> but... To make the games have this sort of fantastical element, um, death is obviously inserted, right? Or some pain in the butt character. But you flip a card and at random, like I have some of the cards over here, you just grab one of these problem cards and you look at it and it says to the game master, cool, the overarching problem in this one is called raising the dead. Now I can share this with the players right off the bat, or I can just kind of like hold it to myself. And it gives me a little okay. summary that says death has been spending a lot of time away from the pad. Meanwhile, word is spreading that the dead are rising from their graves. Death <laughs> says that they've been they've just been catching up on some reading by the cemetery. And it gives them a summary of kind of where we're going. And then on the back side of the card, it gives them basically like exact things they can do in the words of a deadbeat <laughs> yeah. to be like, here's problem number one. How does it get worse? Step two. And then ultimately, how does it go nuclear? How does this yeah. session either like, where are we going to blow up the apartment? Are, are, you know, is everyone going to die? Is there going to like, we're going to flood the city? Um, because it always has that sort of zany, ridiculous nature of if we let these problems keep going, uh, it gets ridiculous. World ending. Yeah. So there, there's that level of cartoon, cartoon logic that's necessary with some things in this game. Like another yeah, problem really like is that. like a, a home shopping addiction. You know, so obviously a death starts ordering stuff that you couldn't find on the home shopping network, but death can. Right. But yeah, are, you know, pretty wild. That's awesome. Uh, and I like how on a lot of the cards, there's uh, there's some artwork on there that uh, that really kind of uh, shows kind of the the style of like the pet peeves is a, a skull with a mushroom cloud coming out of the top. <laughs> it's just, just fantastic. Um, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because um, Zombie World came out over the course of this. Um, you know, in, initially, inspirations were Dread, right? Epidia, you know, made yeah. Dread. It was a really neat experience for horror gaming. Um, something that's remarkable. If everyone who's played it goes, wow, that was really neat, that Jenga Tower role-playing game. Yes. And, uh I met Alex Roberts of Starcrossed at, mm-hmm. you know, at Metatopia, the game design festival. We were both working on a Jenga Tower game kind of simultaneously. Oh, um, yeah. So I, I had the luxury of looking at her game and being like, whoa, this is cool. I, I love the, you know, keep your hand in the tower to keep the tension. Yep. Um, because originally when I set out to even make the tower thing, I just felt like we could we could innovate on Dread's very simple use of a Jenga Tower. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how come nobody's done that yet? And then so I just kind of it's funny how that just kind of built into that with a theme that eventually mashed together and made this deadbeat dark comedy role playing game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was I was inspired even by um, Alex Roberts and and Dread created my own Jenga Tower game. Oh, did you um, recently? I've been trying um, to dig them up, too, because I, 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 there are quite a few that are like hacks or they're, yeah. they're low key projects. But like, yeah, you search around the Internet, and you'll find games, but like just, <laughs> nobody, nobody's published them. And I think that's also because the components, right? Like, yeah, um, it's, I, it's hard to say, you know, go buy a tower and my game. Yeah. Right. 
But a lot of people already have towers. Yeah. Right. And if you're already kind of in this whole, I want to get like the dread, I want to get star crossed and I want to get this, you're already having a tower. <laughs> so you're one, ha- you're one step ahead of everything else, right? Well, it's funny you said that because uh, luckily in my case, uh, I've, I figured out how to get a reasonably priced two colored block tower for you in a, in a very cool box with the game yeah. at a price that still sits very comfortably for role playing games. Yeah. You know, we're looking at that $40 mark, not like 50 or 60 Exactly. So I think a lot of people are going to be like, wow, really? Why is this so cheap? That's amazing. So it's possible. You can, you can manufacture the Black Towers easier than you think. I, exactly. I think it's a lot of the manufacturers are catching up, really. But It's very true. I don't know if my game has legs for something oh, like yeah. that. But um, a real quick aside, it's, it's um, Highlander mixed with um, Dread mixed with um, Reflections. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, two to four player um, kind of antagonistic uh, role playing game. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I, I, I love that, you, you know, reflections like that's a great little game. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, and then you basically play Highlanders at the final gathering where you have to get down to only one. Right? <laughs> and you tell your story with each each other immortal that's there throughout all of history through flashback scenes. Oh, gotcha. And depending yeah, on the flashback scenes, you pull blocks out of the tower. Yeah. And if the tower falls, then the person that made you pull those blocks kills you at the final gathering. Oh. And gets your power. <laughs> so yeah. it's 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 a fun game. It's silly, but <laughs> I, I love too that like it, it's gotta be called like only one or something, you know? Like it's <laughs> it's uh it's a really uh presumptuous title. Uh it's our final gathering, the dreaded reflections of the immortal soul. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. It's got a very like a novel worthy title then. Yeah, yeah it, it was fun. I play tested it once and it was really a blast. Um, but yeah, if, if you're interested, I can send you a link. Oh, of course. Yeah, I'd love to see that. I, you know, the, the game designer in me loves to see games because one, the ideas. But honestly, uh, the reason I make games is because I love games, right? I love role playing games. Oh, absolutely. Um, this is even my my journey as a game designer started because I wanted to give back, right? I wanted to make the role playing game space better than what I received, which was great. But it yeah. ju- it's that just that you love something so much, you want to see if you can add something to it. Exactly. I I share the exact same sentiment. I realized as we've talked that we kind of I think you mentioned the art, and I was going to mention. Um, Zombie World came out over the course of the period, and yeah. I was so luckily I was able to borrow some of their people because <laughs> I I have a pretty good tie in <laughs> with you know Magpie Games. So uh, yeah. uh, I think it's Megan instead of Megan Trot, and she did all the icons for Zombie World. So okay. um, the icons like you had mentioned earlier, um, those uh, I, I'm trying to think of which one you said. Oh yeah, the the pet peeves with the steam coin. Yeah, they're beautiful. Like yeah, I I got those, and I was like. Oh my God, like these are all I need. Make more, make this, make that, you know? So yep. she's wonderful. She's on Twitter. Um, and uh, she made that for both these games. And, you know, I'm, she'll oh, make wonderful. them for many, many more, I'm sure. Yeah, no kidding. Now, oh. most of the other art, though, we've gone to this Invader Zim look, which mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> I feel like uh, I am so happy with the, the new art look, like so freaking thrilled. Um, I- I've had a lot of luck as kind of art directing. But this one, I just couldn't nail. Like I, I had a couple different directions. Mm-hmm. I think I kind of looked for more of adult, like taller figures, like for the cartoony look of this adult swim sort of feel mm-hmm. I was going for. And, uh, you know, maybe like more Rick and Morty. And I brought on someone to help with my social media at Imagining Games, uh, Mitchell Wallace. And Mitchell was like, basically introduced me to Invader Sam. Like I'd seen it, heard of it before and was like, what if it was like this? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. We can try it if you want to go find somebody. And then so after so much time working at it, he found an artist and I was like blown away. And it's been yeah. the greatest thing and we're running through. And right now, obviously the Kickstarter will help us raise more funds to get even more art. But uh, uh, Deborah Campos, she's doing it. She's at actually Argentina and uh, it's it's stunning. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I saw the the cover art on uh, the game box. Uh, it's it's really a wonderful style. And you I may really not like have it. seen it. I, I mean, I give you the image, but like you see the banner in the corner, like that's the new cover. Like, oh, yeah. it's just so cartoony and fun. Uh, yeah. 
And I this this one was inspired. Well, you know, I'm sorry, the listeners, they can't see it. But when you see the cover, <laughs> eventual cover of the box, which will be all over the Kickstarter, it, it's intended where like death and a handful of roommates are all looking down at you. We don't know what happened to you. We don't know if you died, if you fell over, but they're all just looking at you as obviously you're laying on the ground. So uh-huh. it, it's, it's a fun way to think about it because obviously rest in pieces, right? The tower is going to fall. Things exactly. are going to crumble. People are probably going to die. Uh, but character creation is quick, so. That's awesome. <laughs> so speaking of character creation, what sort of characters uh, can people make in this game? I know they're deadbeat roommates, yeah. uh, but what's, what's special about these deadbeat roommates? Um, so obviously they're deadbeats, right? So the idea with that was, I thought that's fun term. Uh, the game is lighthearted, right? The characters have dead-end jobs. They have odd hobbies. They have um, deadly objects. These are terms that be taken, you know, in the best light, right? It's comedy, right? Yeah. Um, so the, these characters are slackers. They're degenerates, right? They're people who aren't good at many things. Yeah. Um, so the fun part is when you make these characters, you play these characters, We, as you'll see, I'm sure when we get to you making somebody, you're going to have a really creative, fun time playing and being like, I need a shovel, but I, I'm a bicycle delivery person and I have poisons and I like playing with fire. But I just wish I had a shovel. Like, my character doesn't do this thing that I need. And I think it's fitting that you're playing characters that are often, like, they're not the right person to fix crazy zany problems. They're, yeah, exactly. they're, they're people stuck in an apartment that's cheap. <laughs> you know, like, um, so half the fun is just kind of laughing in the situations that you get into and, like, okay, what am I supposed to do here? And like, mm-hmm. kind of rolling with the punches. Um, so, I mean, some people play well-intentioned characters who, like we've had most, I don't know if you've had many roommate situations, but everybody knows or has been that person where you're the responsible one or the, the well-intentioned uh-huh. person. So you can be those people too. That's very cool. I like that. So uh, from what you have been saying, it sounds like character creation is pretty fast yeah. and rest in pieces. Uh, so how about uh, we we walk through the process and, and create a character right now? Oh, yeah, please. <laughs> we wouldn't right. be on character creation cast if we didn't. <laughs> exactly. Let's make some people. All right. So I've got the deck in front of me. Um, I, I did notice that there's categories of cards. that So I separated all of the categories just naturally because Good. that's what I do. Um. And there are, looks like four named categories, five named categories. You know, now you're going to put me on the spot. I don't remember. I <laughs> so several. I've got <laughs> odd, odd hobbies, dead end jobs, deadly objects, pet peeves, and pipe dreams. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, okay. There are middle finger cards, but we don't need those for character creation. Uh, oh, they're I the think, rule cards. We don't. Yeah. I <laughs> the person who walks you through the GM needs the rule cards, right? And um, there's also player reference cards, which you won't need because unless we were playing, right? But they, yeah. they give you this thing called a warm body, which is is just another strategy card that reminds you that hey, even if you don't have a card to use, don't forget you are still a warm body, and that's got to amount to something. You can yeah. still walk, run, push, pull, yell at things. <laughs> you know, like you, you have basic human functions, even if you're not very good at them. So. Absolutely. Yeah, so with the cards in front of you, um, you're going to want to draw a pipe dream card. So this one, we usually say draw the card because it's more fun to just see what it is that this character is actually hoping will happen to them one day. These are probably novel things. If you share it, that's probably great for the listeners. Absolutely. So I'm shuffling the deck right now, and I pulled BFF. (laughs) Uh, Say best friends ever. After a friend really pulls through for you, take two blocks from each deadbeat and split them between the two of you. Uh, a real friend is one who walks in when the rest of the world walks out. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so yeah, it's one of the more pleasant ones. So every character is <laughs> going to have, maybe you'll call it a secret objective, but these are just an added thing that maybe you'll pull off over the course of the game or maybe you won't. But it's a motivation to give your your, your player a little more like, what does this character care about? Yeah. This character, like that. BFF, right? You're just trying to have a, a good friend. All these people suck. I know. <laughs> Give me one good friend. <laughs> I can see how that would be annoying with the wrong person. Now, with the, with the wrong roommate, rather. For other people, they'll have this jumbo character card. Uh, you might yeah. have it near you, you might not. Um, and all it really does is it kind of sits in front of you like a, a, a 
character, like a, a play mat is what I was looking for. Um, those people who've played Zombie World will kind of recognize what I was able to kind of almost steal from them was that, so it's got places on this, this jumbo five by seven card that have little slots that can hold like the edge of your, you know, uh, your deadly yeah. object or your okay. odd hobby. So you're making a character in front of you, but you're kind of almost like putting pieces together for most of it instead of yeah, writing sense. out the whole character. Okay. I like this. Right. You're just matching the icons as, as you're yeah. going to put these other ones. So you picked a, a pipe dream. You're going to want to choose one of each of those uh, strategy cards, the odd hobby, dead end job and deadly object. So those you can shuffle through, look at them. I am currently reorganizing my recording space so I can do that. <laughs> All right. So um, I've got dead end jobs because that was the one that I had yeah. in my hand. And I am just going to go full random with these. I was going to say, uh, probably half of the players like doing that even more, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting because you, you have no idea what you're going to get. And it, as a first time uh, player uh, creating a character for this, I don't even know what the options are. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, all right. So I chose uh, Pet Store Associate. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, flip, imagine and describe how your job experience could help your deadbeat in this situation. Gain plus one touch. And the the quote here is, you are one of the team now. Pick up people's slack. Stay late when coworkers call off and help customers who have no idea what they want. Who says there's no I in bleeping team? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, <laughs> for a family podcast, you're going to say bleep a lot. Hey, yep. At least the nice part is the cards say bleep. At least I thought that was nice. I ran it by some people, like it. right? It, it, it's maybe it's a little like middle middle school feel, but I like that it carried the weight because it doesn't remove the vulgarity of the cards. Yes, but at the same point, like you can still show it to kids and feel like you're not <laughs> you're not a bad person. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I know us on uh, Character Creation Cast, we like to keep things family friendly. Yeah. Um, so I, I very much appreciate that. Yeah. So it's where this is where, you know, I've been prompted. Like the the, the box will say 17 plus. Um, the game has all the appeal for your high schooler teenager, but yeah. they may or may not understand the whole roommate concept so well. It kind of depends if they have siblings. So... When I was really looking at the target audience, I was like, most people are going to, going to play this because they've had roommate experiences. Yes. Like they've had a, a time where they went to college or high school They're, when they left the house and they had to share a place with someone else uh -huh. uh, that didn't mind picking up after them. Right. So uh -huh. so playing or off of that is very important. Uh, but yeah. with that in mind, there's a lot of vulgarity and adult themes, obviously death there's drugs Absolutely. and sex illusions and you know there's yeah. stuff that comes up over the game <laughs> um you mentioned the touch right so uh, mm -hmm. when you i might as well tell some mechanics as we're talking um the big thing different about this game other than the two color jenga tower is unless you have a card to use to help further describe how your character can do this um mm -hmm. you can only touch one block on the tower and hope that it comes out Oh. So after a long period of time of playing Jenga for this game and trying to make it harder and harder and harder, I realized people are so much better at Jenga than they think they are. And even yeah. brand new people are so good. They're so good. Yes. So uh, it took a long time because I kept being like, well, maybe if they get seven touches when they're new, when they're, you know, when they're really good at something and five of their own. Yeah. But it just kept coming down and down and down to the point where it's like, no, most people can pretty often identify the one block that'll come out. And if you give them time to touch more, they will always find it. So this yeah. game says you can only touch one block unless you can justify why one of your cards helps you. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, you, so you can, uh, you have to visually observe the tower. It, it's more before fun. Before you actually touch it. Yeah. And you probably want to watch what the other players are doing, right? Like, did that work oh, for yeah. them? Did that one suck? Um, now you can use your cards to give you more touches. So you might even like use a card so you can touch a block and be like, all right, that one's good. I'm going to try another one before I pull because I can pull either one of them, right? Um, yeah. Which also helps with that, you know, light, dark block thing. You'll have a okay. little wiggle room, but it's not as easy as we were talking about earlier, right? Like yeah. that you 
oh, maybe there's only so many dark box. Well, a lot of them are probably not coming out and you can only touch one. So you might have to do something selfless here or yeah. risk knocking the tower over. Oh, wow. Um, when you take these blocks, you keep them. They go on your character card. They become oh, okay. leverage in the roommate situation. You are more respected, more admired, the person who gets stuff done. So um, you use this to play these middle finger cards later and to, like, as an economy, spend them on things to screw other okay. people over and give you advantages. <laughs> but, nice. but I digress. So yeah. um, did you find a hobby and an object? All right. So um, I've got a deadly object here. Um, I chose uh, nails. Great. <laughs> uh, so flip, imagine, and describe how this wonderful object could help your deadbeat in the situation. Gain plus one touch. Uh, and it's uh, these sharp literal uh, <laughs> Fs. We'll say fingers um, <laughs> are are as nasty in a board as they are in a, on a staircase. <laughs> oh, I would never do that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So I put that in my little slot on my character card. Mm -hmm. And now a pet peeve. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go for an object. Uh, you got an object. Go for the hobby. Oh, yeah. Hobby. There it is. I thought I had all of them over here and I missed my hobby. All right. So hobby. Ooh, nice. Cosplay. <laughs> I like that you were saying, you're like, yes, I always wanted cosplay. I love cosplay. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, flip, imagine, and describe how your hobby experience could help your deadbeat in this situation. Gain plus one touch. Um, if I look the part, maybe I could play the part. <laughs> so, like as you're noticing at this point, right, all three of those work the same way. So, the fiction of the card is just a concept. Cool, you deliver stuff on a bicycle, you're a street canvasser, you know, yeah. you're a gas station attendant. It, it's about, okay, well, that's what my character does as a job. So helping the player get into character is them thinking, well, what would that person know about stuff? What would they be able to do? What might they have at their house or what can mm -hmm. they go grab from their job? Um, when we're thinking about, like you had mentioned, um, nails, right? Yeah. So it, it's a matter of like they can make a nail gun. They could be like, oh, I took the nails out of that board earlier. And that's why you fell through the stairs. It, uh -huh. it gives them a lot of narrative ability and sort of. Uh, OK, so not just fingernails. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> fingernails. Yeah. So uh, you'll notice that a lot of those descriptions are similar um, for the same reason. They just play the same. Yeah. Part of the reason for that, too, is like any good roommate, you can borrow other people's strategy cards like that. So if you're paying attention as we play and you're like, man, so and so is an extension ladder. And, I, you know, I'd be really nice if I had it. If they haven't basically flipped their card over so that it's used, you can borrow their card and use it for them, which oh. just means they have less options later when they're going to do stuff. <laughs> um, just like a good roommate, like, oh, I have an extension. Oh, what? Who you? Where's my extension ladder? <laughs> um, or the megaphone or whatever it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it, it kind of adds to it. You don't have to worry about the exact mechanic of every card. There's they're not unique. OK, that's at, pretty cool. At least with those. So, yeah, I like that. Um, pet peeves, you're going to draw, too, because, again, this one, I'm not so interested necessarily in what pet peeves you would choose to bother you, because I think right, like, you probably don't know what irks you as a character. Uh -huh. right? So you draw two of these and they actually go on the left on the right side of your character card because right. you're playing them technically on the player to your left and the player to your right. Oh, this is what bothers you about that player's deadbeat. I like that. OK, so player on the left. Do they have to? Um, let's see here. Imagine to describe how your deadbeat's frustration ruins another deadbeat's action. <laughs> OK, steal a block and pull from them. Wait, who are... Who the heck is outside? Your mom is coming along. Don't they ever sleep? <laughs> what was the one called? What was the card called? Do they have to? Oh, yeah. OK, yeah. And obviously, right, like the person who always has someone that comes along, like they're okay. always they're always with someone else. Some, and it's usually <laughs> like a mom's a good example, right? Yeah. Like, dude, is your mom always around? <laughs> do you always spend time with your your your, your boss like uh -huh. why is your boss always here yeah no kidding okay so well, the um, difference is with that right when you're playing in the game you're actually going to like be able to steal blocks that they've pulled from the tower and that are sitting on their pile 
when you can make something more difficult for them. Okay. So another way you can get these blocks that you want, this pull in the roommate apartment, uh, is by stealing from other people, by inconveniencing them. Um, okay. So you can, as we play, bring up when things suck for them or when things happen. Like, is, is that because your mom is right there? <laughs> or has your mom been here the whole time? And it gives us, again, another narrative opportunity that, like, you've prompted something into the story, they can play off of it, or you can just hold the memory against them, right? Like, well, I'm sure your mom's probably going to show up again. Yeah, I like that. What was the other one? The other one uh, is Instigator. Yeah, we all know those people, right? Yeah. <laughs> this you guy included. to say, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you can't just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> so that's a very obvious one, right? When somebody goes to say something in character and they're talking to you and everyone else and like, so I think we really need to do this, guys. And you're like... Yeah. What's in it for you? And last time you tried <laughs> to get us all together, remember what happened? You know, this is always about you and something that some elaborate plot that's going to help you and not the rest of us. <laughs> I like it. Okay, so I kind of have a good idea of this uh, of this person. Yeah, and then the next few things are the ones you actually write in the card. It's a dry erase card, and you write like, "Where do they sleep?" Because we assume you don't have a bedroom. So, okay. are you sleeping in the ironing board? Are you under the island? Are you in the windowsill? Uh, do you have a hammock? But is it a bunk bed hammock? Because there's three other people with hammocks. You know? oh, no. <laughs> um, to give us something that tells us why, you know, what you care about, right? Every roommate needs to eat. And it's fun okay. to remind people that sometimes people eat your food or there's no food in the fridge. So yeah. we want to know what your favorite food is because it gives us another, as a GM, something that mess with you about something to be gone something that you could be leaving all over the place all right so my resting place is a pile of costumes <laughs> um and my favorite food oh goodness um i'm gonna go with um i'll just go with pizza rolls nice nice yeah might as well everybody everybody has food. it's funny how well people are about like it's not i don't know is it what classifies deadbeat food, right? Or slacker food? <laughs> but, right. like, but everyone nails it. The Cheetos and Mountain Dew, chili cheese dogs, and you know, like, I don't know, nachos, uh -huh. glorious amounts of cheese. I was thinking back to my, my days uh, living with uh, roommates for a short period of time, and our go-to, like, bulk food was taquitos. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> taquitos with, uh, with hot sauce. <laughs> so good. Now I want some. So when you're looking at your character, um, wh what was their job? Their job was a pet store associate. Okay. And what was their hobby? Um, their hobby was cosplay. <laughs> and then what was their object? And their object uh, was nails. Right. So with those, what can you tell me about your character? Like what, what did that throw into your head when you put the combination of those three things as my deadbeat? All right. So they're, they're kind of handy, actually. <laughs> Um, because it, it sounds like they like to do their own cosplay, um, <laughs> and probably build things. Yeah. So they might, they might have aspirations for like set design and costume design or something like that. Yeah. Um, but they're stuck working with pets, uh, at the pet <laughs> store, uh, probably because they are a decent person cause they just want a BFF, right? Yeah. Which clearly um, they're not getting enough of from the pets, the pet store, which is funny. Exactly. So they, they work for this kind of like local weird pet store. That's, you know, it's, it's a job, but the pets are nice. Uh, <laughs> maybe not so much the people or the customers, but the pets are nice. Um, and, and that's what, uh, this person enjoys. Right. Um, so I kind I, of, I was going to say, I just, I love that the three, those three things alone really give you such a core idea of who this character is. Yeah. Uh, I had one, I was making the Kickstarter page and there was a, um, they had the sandwich artist and they like twisted artwork as their hobby. And the, um, the deadly object was, um, a uh, oh, skull, a human skull. Oh. Oh, wow. So I was like, well, it's funny because they're a sandwich artist. So there's the artist. They probably take that seriously, right? As a yeah. character, they, they're like, no, I'm not just a cook at Subway. I'm a sandwich artist because yeah. in my daytime or when you catch me on break, I'm actually looking at this catalog or this <laughs> magazine of all this <laughs> twisted artwork and like black bodies are painted. And, you know, and then like, yeah. 
I carry a skull around, which maybe means that I hope to aspire to one of these twisted artists that maybe are made of skulls. I was just like, wow, you know, I mean, it's fun yeah. to think of like this ridiculous character that has these three things. And who would want that person for a roommate? Exactly. And that person is death because a lot of the core deck reflects interests that we've <laughs> assigned to death, which is really, really funny. I really like that because <laughs> it's just like you're just a normal person. Who's living with death? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> People get it right away. They're like, oh, that, well, that's funny. I get it. So yeah. this is like a funny game, right? Yeah, it's, it's so lighthearted, silly, dark comedy, right? Yeah, and if we were to play this, um, this character feels shy to me um, <laughs> when they're out of costume. Uh, but they would probably like kind of open up when they get into costume. Yeah. Uh, that sort of stuff. Um, and they probably keep to themselves for the most part, but keep getting pulled into you know zany hijinks i like that I, I just grabbed a random pet peeve card because you know the player to your right would assign one to you and the player to your left would assign one to you so like oh, yeah. over the course of play one person would be like yeah but you're always late you're late to everything so as you're <laughs> playing and you're telling your story people are reminding you like yeah but we can't trust them they're always they're never here on time yeah. And the other person said, and you're always looking at your phone. You have a phone <laughs> face. All I ever see is your phone. So, you know, as you'd be describing and doing your things, we're like, maybe you'd have friends if you weren't always just staring at a phone and looking at people. This makes this makes a lot of sense. They <laughs> they are uh, kind of obsessed about their cosplay social media presence, <laughs> uh, living vicariously through the Internet. <laughs> Um, and kind of uh, shuts down a bit in person. <laughs> uh, text base and image base communication is fine, but voice based and in person communication, uh, no thank you. Yeah. And, uh, the, you know, the beautiful part is if I wouldn't have been explaining the mechanics as we talked, I mean, literally, you could flip three cards, put them on your character sheet, write down where you sleep, what you eat, you're done. Yeah. The five minute character creation is really because you're probably flipping through the cards and laughing at them. You know, it's, yep. it's not the five minutes of like me, like, <laughs> oh, which one of these perks do I want? Which play which playbook ability suits my exact needs of what I'm going for? You know, exactly. So and that helps a lot because you're not so worried about death. Right. You're not so worried about like yeah. where this goes. It, the hour investment of play, you're, you're not going to die in the first 10, 20 minutes. If yeah. you do die, it's probably 30 or 40 minutes in, uh, if not at the very end, which is like the epilogging anyway. So exactly. I really like how this kind of reinforces that casual feel of the game, too. Yeah. Like, this is a, a great casual party game. Once you get to know the rules and everything, just take this out. Everybody creates characters. And now now it's kind of like an improv game. Yeah. At the same time, which uh, for people that aren't familiar with playing RPGs, uh, it's it, it feels like it would be an amazing gateway to get into that. Part of it is right that it, it locks in with a lot of uh, popular media, you know, that yeah. it's, if it's at, at, at all in your wheelhouse, because we've all watched sitcoms. Even if you have a long mm -hmm. history of watching Friends, you understand roommate situations that sometimes suck or get annoying yep. as people get excited or, or or new jobs or whatever they have going on. And you've if you haven't lived through that, you might have siblings or you've at least shared a desk at school or something. You know, like, yeah. So it very much I heard Mark is Truman talking about zombie world. And I, I loved what he put was like people know zombies. I can just put mm -hmm. zombie up here and then like focus on an experience that's like about, uh, you know, you sharing an enclave and the dark grittiness of people worrying about survival. And mm -hmm. In this game, like I don't have to explain roommates to you. Yep. Um, though, <laughs> caveat, I did send a, a, a preview copy out to Ireland and they had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> oh, interesting. I, I had no, and I had no idea about that. Right. So literally yeah. they were like, um, we don't have roommates. We have flatmates. Uh, yep. They didn't understand the whole deadbeat concept. So it's just, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, I learned this is not for you. <laughs> like, you just yeah. like uh, you like the movie quotes um, and that's fair. Like. Culturally, yeah. we're different. And, uh, but I was—I never would have thought that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it's interesting uh, what we find out when we, we start looking into other cultures uh, and everything like that. So uh, that, that's a really interesting find. Yeah. I, yeah. I wonder if they have similar concepts, but they're just called something different or... Right. 
or or is it like culturally like i wonder i, I haven't got heard back but you know like i'm really curious to hear what like we hear about from cultures like in the like asian cultures like yeah. i'm i'm uh, south korean but i would love to hear what like the japanese players would say in particular mm -hmm. but obviously south koreans are very, more similar as well when it comes to like um culture you know the very yeah. very uh every word that we say in korean um ends with not male or female sort of like um terminology it ends with age so oh, the okay. endings we put on words are based on if you're older than me or younger than me because i give you oh, more respect when you're older so that whole culture that we know we call in the U u.s is like elderly focused right like we, mm -hmm. we take care of our elders it's baked in their language yeah every room they walk into they figure out immediately who deserves respect or who's older than me and they always know they have to remember that because yeah that's more important than male female in their language so absolutely anyway side note <laughs> <laughs> well this is really cool uh, i don't have a name for this person um gosh okay you did I touch on one like... thing what i really hope is that uh there's some backer levels that'll come in where players yeah. can suggest names Ooh. and they'll be listed right in the card decks uh, i don't know necessarily if i'm going to put it in the background of the cards or if we're going to do something like extra cards that are just like names um yeah. but one of the levels is like you know you can suggest a deadbeat character name. So we have lists and I think it'll be really fun because people will put in like their old roommates or their bosses or, you know, like yeah. all, <laughs> they're deadbeat in their life. They're going to insert into a game and immortalize them. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to, um, I'm, oh goodness. I don't want to, I, I was thinking like she goes by her Twitter handle or something yeah. like that. Yeah, right? sure. Um, or, the, or they, uh, they, they have an Instagram account and, <laughs> and that's, that's kind of like, just call me this. Cause that's what matters. Especially cause like maybe they picked the blogger card. Like they don't actually have a job. You might not even know that much about a death probably picked them out. Is like their deadbeat application. Death probably yeah. doesn't care what your name is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Death was like, this person likes, you know, fireworks is a blogger. And, um, what, what's another one? Let's see. Uh. Where's my card? And likes hacking. All right. Yeah. This person's interesting. They can be a roommate for as long as that lasts. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I like it. All right. Uh, well, is there anything interesting you want to highlight about the Kickstarter? Uh, yeah. Especially anything related to character creation. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, the, there. you know, the core thing we talked a lot about initially was like, okay, death is the problem roommate. This sort of basement studio apartment, which in the game, I so far I call it Death Dungeon, right? But that's yeah. that's the pad for death, right? You room with death, you are in this basement studio apartment. It's got, you know, some prompt uh, description of giving you an idea of what that feels like. You know, crimson mm -hmm. uh, coffin-shaped cabinets in the kitchen, you know. Um, what we're going to do with the Kickstarter is it'll launch with two other characters that'll be expansion oh. characters. Uh, and they introduce pads that reflect them. Oh, okay. So uh, the great Cthulhu will make an appearance. Oh, no. Uh, the great Cthulhu <laughs> is a perfectionist, is oblivious, and is very, very sleepy. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so it's funny that uh, you'll, you'll get new characters that'll be this super powerful, uh, pain in the butt character. Uh, and that, the reason for that is, right, what are you going to do to death when death is causing all these problems? Yeah. Because death will just kill you. <laughs> like you exactly. can't, you, you got to kind of <laughs> deal with it or over time win them over or passive aggressively deal with the problem. Because you yeah. can't just go fight death. You no. Let me tell you, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> so, And the same goes for all of these characters. They're important is that the pain of my character, you can't just easily remove them. Yeah. So we have like Sharon, the boat, the ferryman of the underworld that's coming and uh, oh, the wow. girl from the ring. We even have Donald Trump coming. So, oh, no. <laughs> so if we unlock these other characters, uh, hopefully, you know, um, we'll have a lot of really amazing new locations. And yeah. then they come with decks that provide new variants on the jobs and the hobbies. They go in addition to the core deck. So you just kind of add them in and swap out the character pad. Oh, wow. So it, it's neat because the, like the Cthulhu one, for example, will take you back to more of like the 1920s, like more of the. Like, so yeah. some and the jobs get fun, right? Because they're ridiculous because they're, you know, they're so old school and, you know, antiquated. Oh, yeah. So that also plays with the setting. So character related, um, character creation related, cool thing to look forward to is, you know, these packs really, they're going to be great. Oh, that's really cool. I like that so much. <laughs> Um, other things I should mention, there will be a stuffed death plushie 
And I don't know, Ooh. once you see the Invader Zim art of death, I don't know how you're really going to say no to it because it's going right? to be so cool. <laughs> so, yeah. This is very neat. I, I really have enjoyed this. Good, yeah. And I mean, you know, hopefully, uh, I, I hope, what I'm trying to say is that I think it almost couldn't come out at a better time. You know, mm -hmm. COVID has really made so many things so hard and made things real easy to be negative, especially in political season, right? But like, this game is going to make people laugh and it's going to make people smile and yeah. maybe can, can be an escape. So hopefully the Kickstarter will capture that. And I hope that we can, we can put some smiles on faces and make some people laugh because uh, I think it will be just a fun thing to have infused into the current times. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I know Kickstarters take a little while to fulfill for everything. So hopefully once this starts fulfilling, everything will settle down. Yeah. And people can actually get together and play some cool Jenga like yeah. based uh, RPGs together. I think that would be really fun. The plan is June. You'll have it in June. And oh, if my track lovely. if my track record shows you, you'll have it in May. So so far oh, I deliver God. Kickstarters early. So Yeah, I think that's a good time frame. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, Pete, thanks so much for joining us to talk about rest in pieces. It's been a total pleasure. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you for letting me geek out on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will never not let that happen. <laughs> awesome. Can you remind uh, everyone where they can find you online? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my game company is Imagining Games. You can go to ImaginingGames.com. Uh, there's an Imagining Games on Facebook, on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the victim of, you know, hey, I used the cool character name from back in the day that nobody cares about. <laughs> so it's V-E-M-B-R-A-N-O-R. So it's Vem Branner. Um, but yeah, if you want to pay attention to Rest in Pieces, uh, there's a Rest in Pieces Facebook group. I've been dropping all these cool art pictures and little insights into the game to kind of yeah. keep people informed what's going on. Uh, it launches on the 29th at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. So yep. um, should be out I really by the time hope... this episode drops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hope you can join us. It'll be fun. Absolutely. Oh, uh, this is this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for the special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight. And thanks to everyone for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to check out the Rest in Pieces Kickstarter, which is going on right now. Uh, and we will be back at our regular time next week. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we got to read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Asians Represent.
Asians Represent celebrates Asian creators and diversity in the gaming community. Join hosts Agatha Chain and Daniel Kwan as they discuss gaming, genre, and representation with their guests, and occasionally argue with each other to the sound of Agatha's beloved Airhorn app.